the Islamic Republic of Pakistan is strategically situated between South Asia, Central Asia and the Middle East. With a 650-mile coastline along the Arabian Sea and the Gulf of Oman in the south, the country is bordered by Afghanistan and Iran in the west, India in the east and China in the far northeast. Over the centuries, a series of divergent cultures, the Persian, Islamic, Mauryan, Mongol, Mughal, Sikh and the British have subjugated Pakistan. In 1947, the country finally gained independence from the British Empire after a struggle that sought sovereign states for the Muslim majority populations of the eastern and western regions of British India. Today it is a federal parliamentary republic consisting of four provinces and four federal territories. With over 170 million people and over 60 different languages spoken, it is the sixth most populous country in the world and has the second largest Muslim population after Indonesia. Although its economy is semi-industrialized, about 20% of the population live below the international poverty line of 1.25 US dollars a day and the majority are still dependent on living off the land. Since independence, Pakistan's history has been characterized by periods of military rule, political instability and conflicts with neighboring India. The enduring Afghan situation has also had a serious destabilizing effect. The country faces many challenges, including poverty, illiteracy and terrorism. But despite these tribulations, not all is doom and gloom. The Torgar, or Black Mountain Range, is situated in northeastern Balochistan, near the border of Afghanistan. Approximately 55 miles long and 15 miles wide, the mountain range is formed of rugged sandstone. Its northern boundary is the Kunda River Valley, whilst the Kaisor Valley forms its southern boundary. The climate in the region is semi-arid. Summers are warm, with mean temperatures ranging from 70 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, whilst the winters, which last for about seven months, are cool, with mean temperatures below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The average annual rainfall ranges between 5 and 20 inches, most of which comes in winter in the form of snow. The region is characterized by steppe vegetation and the major tree species include wild pistachio, juniper and wild ash. The area is also rich in herbs and shrubs. But it is its abundant and diverse wildlife that this region has long been famous for. Its mountains once contained large populations of straight-horned or Suleiman markhor, Afghan Ural, snow leopard and, in some places, black bear. Unfortunately, since the late 1970s, unrest in Afghanistan has initiated a steady flow of refugees, weapons and ammunition into the region. With modern weapons, mostly AK-47s, and plentiful supply of ammunition, Seasonal migrants and local residents decimated the wildlife. By the early 1980s, the Suleiman Markor and Afghan Ural populations were on the brink. The snow leopard became extinct across the sub-region. The Torgar Mountains are situated within the provincially administered tribal area and consequently local tribal leaders exercise considerable power. One of the most charismatic leaders from the region during this time of carnage was the late Nawab Taimur Shah Jogazi. He himself was a hunter and realized that if something were not done, the Suleiman Markor and Afghan Ural would disappear. He decided to impose a total hunting ban, which he was able to enforce through both his tribal authority as well as his official status within the government. With the help of Sadar Nasir Tareen, the Torgar Conservation Project, TCP, was born. I am not a conservationist uh, in terms of in some scientific uh, background as a biologist or a zoologist or anything of that sort. I'm basically a filmmaker. While doing a film, I realized that uh, Straton Marhor or Suleiman Marhor, as we call it, was almost gone. So with this idea, 
I approached the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. There was a gentleman in charge at that time, Mr. Dave Ferguson, and asked him if he could help the government of Balochistan and Pakistan with conserving this species that was almost gone. So a team was sent way back in 1984 and uh, it was headed by uh, the late Professor Bart Ugara of Montana University. After his discussion and that of his team with the uh, bureaucrats and the other officials, they reached a conclusion that uh, the only way to save the animal was through some private efforts. As a result, we talked with the community of Torgar and established the project. The help extended to us was through the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. They sent the biologists who did the surveys. They gave us the idea of how to use, how to start this sustainable use conservation project. And we started this uh, in November of 1985. At that time, the animal population, the Marhor was less than 100. Of that of Oreal was probably slightly more. But the Population wasn't enough for a serious trophy hunting program. The main threat to the uh, animals in Torgar was from the community because the area is outside the government control per se. And so the only thing we could do was to talk to the community as the idea was as to what will happen if once we had the population and we had a hunting program and the money will come to the community. Otherwise, it's no more than a few kilos of meat for them. And that was also on the vanishing point. So the community agreed and we started conserving the animals. The Torgar Conservation Program, TCP, and the Suleiman Marko population of the Torgar Mountains have continued to prosper with the help of some of the world's leading wildlife conservation organizations, such as WWF Pakistan, the IUCN's Sustainable Use Specialist Group, IUCN Pakistan, the United Nations Development Program, and Conservation Force. In short, it is an extremely successful program by which local tribespeople participate in the conservation and re-establishment of Suleiman Markor and Afghan Uriel. A small number of hunting permits are sold to international hunters and the profits from these sales fund the TCP's conservation and community projects. These projects include paying the salaries of local game guards, the construction of dams, the establishment of nurseries and orchards, the sinking of wells and installation of hand pumps, construction and maintenance of irrigation canals, the building of retaining walls, the cleaning out of springs to increase the volumes of water, the construction and maintenance of roads, and the ongoing provision of medical supplies for both the people and their livestock. In return, the local tribespeople have agreed not to hunt any of the wildlife species of the region. My name is Amir Khusro and I belong to a Jogeze family, which is a subcast of uh, Sanzar Khir Kakar who lives in this uh, area of northern Balochistan. We have uh, 500 families around this part of the Thorgar. They are semi-nomadics, they change their places with the time of uh, season. They are seasonal migrants. Uh, their source of income is to sell in the market for their livelihood. My grandfather, Nawab Temursha Jogizai, who launched this idea of conservation Thorgar in 1984. It is a successful program for to conserve the animal as well as to make um, uh, the money for the local people. This is why important because the trophy hunting fees is essential to run the program. Some money goes to the program to manage and the rest of the money goes to the local community. These people were initially very opposite to this program 
and now they are well satisfied because they know uh, this program that they are very helpful for them so this is a blessing or in disguise that the wild sheep uh, is earning a money for them in 1985 fewer than 100 Salim and Marko were thought to be living in the Torgar mountains region since the inception of the TCP, the numbers have steadily increased. In 1994, a study revealed that the number of Marko had climbed to almost 700. Surveys in 1997 and 1999 showed populations of 1,298 and 1,694 respectively. By 2004, the Zoological Survey of Pakistan revealed that the Marko population had grown to approximately 2,500. At the time of the most recent survey, November 2008, the number had burgeoned to over 3,100. Most of our, nearly 99% of our surveys are conducted by the American biologists. And we still consider the help from the American biologists to be of quite importance for us. The logic of the program's success is rather simple. The animals sought by hunters are exclusively older males with the largest horns. Hunting those animals means leaving the females and younger males at peace, therefore not interfering in the reproduction cycles. The growth rate is thus undisturbed. Because of the TCP's success, Tribal groups from at least seven other mountain ranges in Balochistan have expressed an interest in establishing similar programs. Over the years, it was very difficult. We went through problems with the government, the legal status of this uh, project, and also the legal status of permits that were issued by the tribal authorities at that time. Over this quarter of a century, we have legalized all that. The CITES has granted us special permits for the Marhor hunts. And uh, our income is pretty satisfactory. We have not increased the numbers of animals because we would like to keep track of the money that comes into the project as to not to disturb the uh, the whatever social ways of the mountains are the main idea of these uh, funds are to make a dent in their poverty their health programs pay and also some development development that does not uh, hurt the habitat and uh, disrupt the animal movement from one part to the other. The United States Endangered Species Act identifies five factors that must be considered when determining whether a species should be listed threatened or endangered. They are a. The present or threatened destruction, modification or curtailment of the species habitat or range. b. Overutilization for commercial, recreational, scientific, or educational purposes. C. Disease or predation. D. The inadequacy of existing regulatory mechanisms. And E. Other natural or man made factors affecting its continued existence. Moreover, the Basis of Determination section expressly provides that the efforts being made by the foreign nation should be taken into account. With reference to the Suleiman Markor of the Torgar Mountains, these factors need to be examined closely. a. Present or threatened destruction, modification or curtailment of habitat or range. The core area of the project is approximately 22 miles by 15 miles with a buffer area extending an additional nine miles to the east and west of the core area. The core zone is directly protected under the TCP, whilst the buffer zone hosts human settlements and domestic livestock. In addition to the protection afforded by the TCP, the core zone is protected by its rugged terrain and is not easily accessible. 
Consequently, the vegetation located there is in good condition, preserved in part by natural factors. The buffer zone is subject to grazing by domestic livestock. Nevertheless, the local people are aware of the environmental dangers of raising excess livestock. Agriculture is viewed as an alternative to animal husbandry and a means by which grazing pressure and livestock-wildlife interactions can be reduced. There is no significant risk that the Suleiman Marcos range will be destroyed, modified or curtailed to the extent that it will have any negative effect on the species. B. Overutilization for commercial, recreational, scientific or educational purposes. Under the TCP, the risk of Suleiman Marcos overutilization is nil. An annual harvest of 1 to 2 percent is acceptable to maintain a healthy, viable population. The TCP goes further by issuing an even smaller number of hunting permits. Funding from tourist hunting has eliminated the poaching, local recreational use and all commercial use. We have uh, more than 100 uh, game guards and uh, they are living in surroundings of this area, some in the core area, some are the, on the boundary of this uh, area. They are protecting from all directions. Nobody can poach, nobody can uh, intrude in this program. They are very vigilant throughout the year. If they uh, leave the area, they will induct another brother or cousin uh, that to protect uh, the Thorgar area from the other uh, communities which can poach or which can intrude the area. C. Disease or predation. Sulim and Marko have a relatively long lifespan, reproduce at a high rate for their body size, adapt well to harsh climate conditions and are not susceptible to predators. Similarly, Markor are not threatened by any significant risks of disease. The domestic livestock of the region are prone to various diseases, but there is no evidence of disease transmission from the domestic livestock to the wild caprines. Nevertheless, to improve the health of the local domestic livestock and thereby further minimize the risk of disease to the Markor, a community-based animal health service for the domestic livestock has been initiated within the TCP area. D. Inadequacy of existing regulatory mechanisms. 1. Local regulations. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has acknowledged the TCP as an example of a well-managed conservation program that limits removal from the wild and further promotes and advances the conservation of the species. The Endangered Species Act mandates that conservation programs of foreign countries should be recognized when based on sound science. Since the service cannot develop recovery plans for foreign species, priorities for listing or delisting must, by necessity, take into account the conservation programs of other countries in determining which actions are of higher priority. There are no other viable consumptive uses for Marco and Uriel that provide the same economic return per animal harvested. D. Inadequacy of existing regulatory mechanisms. 2. International regulations. The trade of Suleiman Marco is strictly regulated by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, CITES. The species is listed on CITES Appendix 1 and therefore it is protected by the most stringent regulations. It is important to note that the US Endangered Species Act was enacted to take such steps as may be necessary to achieve the purposes of CITES. The laws of Pakistan, TCP hunting regulations and the CITES quota and non-detriment determination are more than adequate to protect the Suleiman Markor. E. Other natural or man-made factors affecting the Suleiman Marcos continued existence. One major hurdle stands in the way of the Suleiman Marcos continued success. It's listing as endangered in the United States, the world's largest conservation hunting market. There is no death of hunters from Europe, but I think the American hunter should have the same right since his government was at some stage involved in establishing the Thorgar Conservation Project. 
The service has acknowledged that its listing of the Suleiman Marko has hindered the TCP's conservation program and that the program would benefit if US hunters were allowed to import their trophies. Few American hunters are interested in hunting an animal of value if they cannot take the trophy home. This fact reduces the demand and keeps the price of hunting permits artificially low. Other species of Marco, which are importable into the United States, command much higher hunting permit prices than the Suleiman Marco. A Kashmir Marco hunt can cost up to 150,000 US dollars, generating three times the revenue amount. The Suleiman Marco population of the Torgar Mountains has recovered. It is no longer endangered and should not be treated as such. It is the largest population in the world. In fact, failure to downlist this species could lead to the Marco's return to endangerment. The Marco, the TCP and the local people need the United States cooperation in ensuring their continued success. It is important to recognize the model, reward the participants and cooperate with the existing program. Otherwise, the program cannot reach its potential and in fact becomes a negative model and a disincentive to all concerned. The downlisting would recognize the program, act as an incentive that would motivate others to restore species and increase the revenue for the Marcor's enhanced conservation. The principal aim of the Endangered Species Act is to return listed species to a point at which protection under the Act is no longer required. Reducing or eliminating trade in a species is a short-term conservation measure. Sustainable use is the long-term solution. The US Fish and Wildlife Service has long recognized that community-based sustainable use programs like the Campfire Program in Zimbabwe are the long-term solutions. It is quite clear that all of the necessary requirements of the Endangered Species Act to downlist the Suleiman Markor of the Torgar Mountains from endangered to threatened have been fulfilled. Inshallah we will have one day that uh, the whole world will know about the Torgar conservation program as well as this community. These are the people who make it this program successful and these are the achievements, these are the stories which we can uh, proudly to tell every uh, citizen of the world that look, uh, come to Thorgar, look the endeavors we have taken. Now we are having many, many animals everywhere, every time you can watch, you can climb to the mountain, you can uh, watch many animals in, in many directions. These were the achievements of this society. We are proud of Thorgar, we are committed uh, to conserve this area. We are committed to, in the future, we will never let it down in the, at every cost. We are, inshallah, will be having a good future here.